It's nearly harvest time, and Molly Breslin is on a mission. I realized recently that, that farming on its own I don't think would be enough to, for me. I, I think I'm also partly doing it to, to try to save the world, <laughs> one, one bean at a time. It's an almost messianic message in what some farmers describe as an almost apocalyptic year. And we're really lucky that this wasn't our first year. <laughs> Because I think I would have just thrown it all down and quit if it, if it had been. Like her neighbors, the Illinois farmer grows corn, grains, and exotic beans. But unlike the farms around her, everything on her farm is organic, made for specialty markets. Organic farmers shun chemical fertilizers and pesticides. They use soil conservation techniques they say help retain water. That, Breslin says, has been key to the survival of Breslin Farms in the historic drought of 2012. Our soil management systems have allowed the soil to hold moisture longer. Small farm experts say it's not that conventional techniques don't work, they do. James Thury, a Kenyan-born University of Illinois small farm advisor, says genetically modified corn does resist drought. It's just not sustainable or as effective long term. If indeed we are going to see a climate change and we are going to see less of rain, organically uh, managed soils will definitely have advantages over conventional farms. We are destroying life below ground. Conventional farmers insist pesticides and genetically modified plants help them survive the crop withering drought and still produce impressive yields. A lot of people say that that organic food can't feed the world um, and my response is if we put as much money into research <laughs> for organic agriculture as we put into research for conventional agriculture, then I think that that would probably be a different story. Molly Breslin hopes one day the expense and damage to the soil of conventional farming may make organic farming the norm, not the exception. John Hendren, Al Jazeera, Ottawa, Illinois.